Good afternoon and welcome to the latest in our series of live HOP webinars brought to you by the HOP platform. So that's something I hope that you can see behind me and on your screen at the moment. HOP stands for the Hertfordshire Opportunities Portal. It is a website that has been created for young people and students specifically in Hertfordshire because it provides a whole host of resources that you can use to help you find out about your next career steps. Now, the purpose of these webinars that we're running at the moment is to give you the opportunity to hear directly from people who have got industry experience, and in this case today, have actually got experience as current tutors at West Hearts College. This webinar, we'll, we're running this live, which is Thursday afternoon. So firstly, well done if you come home from school and you've logged on to this webinar because you want to find out more about careers in hair, beauty or media makeup. Um, it's a really good opportunity for you to hear say directly from experts who can tell you about their own journeys and what they cover right now. Um, but you've got the opportunity to ask any questions as well. So if there's anything that you hear today and you want to know a little bit more about, you can do that. And you do that via a question tab on your dashboard, which means it comes up as a text. So you haven't got to speak out loud. We're not, you're not, we're not going, no one's going to see you on camera. Your question will come directly through to me, then I will direct it to the um, whichever panelist is most suitable to answer that question. So really use this opportunity over the next hour or so to, um, to get those questions into our panelists. So without any further ado, let me hand you over to our panelists just to introduce themselves. So they're all representing West Hearts College today. So first of all, if I say um, good afternoon to Tanya, Tanya, could you tell us a little bit about your background and what you teach currently at West Arts College? So I teach, uh, at the moment I'm teaching on the level three and level four beauty therapy programme. So we offer from level one to level four beauty therapy at West Hearts. And I've been in the industry for going on 30 years now. So um, I actually trained at West Hearts College um, and then progressed from there to working in a salon um, and then worked my way up to a trainer, area manager, and then came into teaching. So it's, it's been a real passion to be working in the beauty industry. And I've seen the changes throughout with sort of the treatments that are offered, the products that are being um, recommended. So it's a real diverse industry. Sure. Thank you very much, Tanya. And look forward to delving a little bit more into your um, past experiences and, and some tips that you've got to offer within beauty therapy. Uh, good afternoon, Claire. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, so my name is uh, Claire. I'm a hairdressing and a barber and tutor here at West Hearts. Um, here at West Hearts, we deliver level one hair and beauty to level two hairdressing and level three hairdressing. Also, we do level two barbering. Um, a little bit about my background, I started doing hairdressing 13 years ago, I started doing an apprenticeship um, and then I progressed completely my level two to level three um, and I worked in various salons and then wanted to get into being an educator and I've never looked back and I love it. Um, so thank you. Yep. Thanks very much Claire and good afternoon Remy. Hello. <laughs> So um, I teach the level three and four media makeup, but we do offer from level two, um, which is the media hair round and makeup course. Um, I got into the industry, I started off doing hair actually from school, and then I progressed on to doing a bit of um, make, uh, media makeup training at Grief Paint, which is like an old, um, it's not around anymore actually, but it's got a, it's like TV and film school for makeup. And I kind of do, obviously I'm into teaching, at the moment, but I still keep my foot in the industry and do a little bit of um, TV sometimes, photo shoots, um, kind of everything really. It's just a bit of keep my yeah, keep my options open so that I can teach you all here. Um, but yeah, that that's kind of uh, my very quick journey. <laughs> Weirder because I can't see myself. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. I think just really important point just to make, first of all, I mean, you guys are all representing West Hearts College, which, and I assume you're at the Watford campus. Yeah, we um, are. So anyone over the west side of the county, so particularly Watford area, Hemel area, that would be your local college. But just to point out, because I know that there are some of you watching from other parts of Hertfordshire today, you might be nearer to Oaklands College in St Albans, you might be close to North Hearts up in Stevenage and Hitchin, or you might be close to where I am at the moment down at Hertford Regional College down in Broxbourne. So 
all four of the colleges will offer similar courses today. So what you're hearing today will be specifically about West Hearts College, but there will be similar options available at your nearest college. So usually when people choose which college they want to go to, it will usually be based on where you live or where you can actually get to. So don't worry if you're not immediately closer to Watford and think that that's too far from you. So there's a good chance your other local college will be able to offer something for you. Um, so look, my, my first question, in fact, Remy, let me ask you this question, because you said you went into hair to start with and you've now gone into yeah. makeup. When I talk to lots of young people who say they want to, they often say, I want to go into hair and beauty. And I think there's an assumption that they're one and the same. But could you first of all, just try and give us a distinction between what was the difference between hair and beauty and makeup? Yeah, so I mean, they're three separate industries. So, you know, they're completely different skills, totally different um, like areas, but they can kind of combine, don't they? Like they all intertwine into the industry. Um, for example, I'm a makeup artist, but as a makeup artist, I needed to know certain levels of hair skills, and that is just what's expected from me in the industry, um, and some beauty skills to like a certain extent as well. Um, but whereas if you were a hairdresser, you probably wouldn't have that. I think it's just mainly hair that you do, and beauty therapy I know involves makeup, but not hair. So like we're all very separate industries with very like overcrossing skills. So I do know. A lot of people who do a bit of everything and that's what they you know they, they kind of specialize in a bit of everything but generally you do stick to your main areas in the industry um i think you'll agree with that wouldn't you? yeah, yeah it's, they're, they're very separate and, but we do offer like here a level one course which has got all three which is amazing for the you know um our level one and that kind of gives you an idea of like a starting point of where you want to go into um but obviously ideally people would start on the level two course when, when they come in you know? so it's, it's you have got a lot of different options out there but they're just three totally different industries really that sure. combine if that makes sense <laughs> so i mean claire do you find do you have many students who maybe start by doing hair but then realize they want to do beauty or makeup or the other way around is that is that fairly common that people when they're making those choices at 16 they don't quite know which one they want to go into yeah, no, definitely. There's, we have a lot of students that will, you know, they're, when they've left school, they come to ourselves and they want to do level two hairdressing first. They complete the year and they go, you know, hairdressing's not for me. I'd like to go into doing media or they want to go down and do beauty. And I always say that's a really good advantage for them because, you know, um, with, you know Remy mentioned about you keep yourself in the industry and you're, you know, doing bridal shoots. And for example, having that option to be able to offer makeup as well as hair it just widens your prospects in progression routes for jobs. So it's great to know, you know, beauty, hair and media in avenues of life, it's brilliant. But we do have students that are a little bit unsure um, on the route that they want to take. It happens quite a lot, actually. I think that, sorry, I've just totally jumped in again, yeah. but it's very, um, you know, a lot of people do decide to do a different thing. And we've got the you know, like facility so that they can do it. So they can do a year in hair and then do a bit of makeup and then maybe go back and do a bit of beauty, you know. You've got funding up until the age of 19 so a lot of people do dip in like a couple of different um areas and they offer all of it so mm -hmm. it's kind of we're, we're quite lucky actually that we have everything but they are yeah they're separate yeah. Pieces. okay well let's try and cover each one separately but we you may well find as we're discussing this that, that there are some similarities between so tanya let me start with you so you said you've got 30 years experience in the in, in the beauty industry i mean tell us what does a beauty therapist actually do what's sort of the average day or week like for someone working in industry as a beauty therapist so a typical day would involve uh, you know having a look at the bookings appointments see what you've got for that day so hopefully you're fully booked with a range of treatments so clients might be having manicures, pedicures, facials, body treatment, massage. And essentially, it's about managing that day so that you're on time. Um, you're working and doing those treatments to the client's satisfaction, but that you're also sort of engaging with the client as well. So doing the treatments, conducting the consultation, um, doing some skin analysis, and then making recommendations on products, um, services, uh, and ultimately sort of managing your day um, and then rebooking those clients as well. But it will also involve cleaning. Um, so you'll need to sort of clean your work area, you'll help with reception, so you'll be answering the phone, um, taking bookings, handling sort of uh, transactions as well. So and you might be doing lots of different sort of duties as well, stock taking, 
So it, it can be quite varied. So no two days are the same because you've got the opportunity of doing lots of different treatments each day. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, Claire, same question to you. And Claire, when we spoke yesterday, you were telling me that you had a completely different um, career aspiration when you first left school, didn't you? I did. Um, so when I actually left school, um, I wanted to be a nurse. And I remember just starting my health and social care uh, level two. And I was in a salon on the weekends. And I was doing my course. And I remember saying to my mum, I don't want to do health and social care. And she said, well, OK, finish your course, get to the end, achieve that so you've got it. And I said, OK, fine. And at the end, we'll review and see where you want to be. And I said, no, I really want to be a hairdresser. So I finished my level two health and social care. And then I had taken the route of doing an apprenticeship. Um, and, you know, going back a step, being a little bit unsure at the first is actually OK. That's fine, to, you know, to find out what you want to do. And I think the most key important thing is doing something that you love because it's where you're going to spend most of your time um, and you've got to enjoy your, your job, you've got to enjoy what you're learning. And that, I think that's really important. I'm glad I, I had that choice first to make my mind up. Sure, okay. So, I mean, just tell us a little bit about working in a salon. I, I'm, I'm sure everyone watching this at the moment can relate to this, because I'm sure everyone um, has had experience of either going visiting a salon or at least having a, a hairdresser or barber come to visit them at home. But what's the reality of it like? I mean, you, you, you're on your feet all day. I, presume for a start you must be really tired after a full day no definitely very similar to um what tanya had mentioned and um, you know you have a column and you have your clients booked in and you know you could be rushed off your feet but the really good thing about it is dynamics you might have a client in for different services so you might have a client for a color service but the next client you might have have in that you're doing a restyle and the most enjoyable bit about it is that you're creating a change and you're seeing where you've started that service at the start to the end and it's an achievement to you because you can be like, well, I achieved that. My model's left now and it's really fun. It's busy and you're, you are on your feet all day. Um, a lot of communication with clients, um, especially at the start, consultation is really important. Um, but it's, it's a fun and it's a, it's a busy environment to work in, but it's really enjoyable. It's really fun. Sure, okay. And then, well, Remy, let me, let me ask you the same question. What's the, what's the day in the life of a, of a makeup artist? It could be a number of things. So you've got obviously the salon option. You could work in a salon and have your appointments and do your occasion makeup or your bridal and things like that, um, which a lot of people do do. But you also have, um, there's so many different areas within the makeup industry. So like say you're in a TV production or a film production, you're basically the first one to get there and the last one to leave. Um, and your call time could be at six o'clock in the morning and then you've got a 10 hour day where you're rushing around on your feet and doing makeup and then hanging around for a bit. And it's not all glamorous, but it is really fun because you get to work with new teams and, and actors and different people constantly. Um, but there is, you know, there, there's a, it could be different every single day. And that's what I like about being a makeup artist because it's not the same every day. So some days it might be a bit boring and you might just be sitting around doing a bit of powdering on set and some basic makeup. But the next day you might be doing some um, like casualty makeup or special effects and, you know, something like that. Um, so it really depends. But um, a typical day in the life of a makeup artist who's a, who's a new makeup artist you might be a trainee on set. So there'll be a bit of thing a bit of cleaning like Tanya was mentioning, a little bit of um, making cups of tea, but also then speaking with the clients and, and obviously um, applying the makeup and, and, and hair and, and removing it. That's the bit that we have to do at the very end of the day when everyone else has gone home. It's just you and the talent and you're removing whatever you've put on them to begin with. So yeah, it, I'm making it sound a bit unglamorous, but it is really fun, <laughs> but it can be quite long. <laughs> yeah, no, it, 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 it sounds it. But you, I mean, you've spoken there about maybe some of the challenging aspects of the role. Um, Claire, you said around how you know how enjoyable it is, I suppose, particularly when you're doing hair, is that you can see what that end product is. So you can see something that you have created and you can yeah. see kind of that before and after and the difference that you that you make. Would you say is that the is that the most enjoyable part of the role? What what are the other sides that you enjoy? The most bit that I enjoy as well is you build that portfolio of, you know, you're achieving work, you're seeing the before and after look, but also you're building rapport with your clients. So I've had clients for many years now that still come to me to get their hair done. And it's, you build that rapport, you build that connection with your clients. 
and you know you're working with different hair types you're gaining experience creating new trends so even though you know you're creating styles it's really important to keep within the industry and it's really fun because in you know media beauty and hair the industry is always changing styles are changing so for us as educators we're keeping ourselves in the trends to make sure that we're delivering upcoming trends to our students as well so it's just it's just really fun to see the transition over time and sometimes really old styles you know going back to thinking Wait. of um, a pixie haircut you know that comes back into fashion um certain you know balayage comes into fashion but then sometimes having you know like a slice um, like hairline a section of a halo it comes back fashion always changes so it's really fun when being in a salon having that environment you're able to create looks and be creative on your clients and seeing that achievable look is just really fun really really fun to do sure so i mean clearly it's a very creative role um i mean remy just coming back to the makeup side of it how do you make sure you're staying on top of trends and what's happening is that your role as the makeup artist or is someone telling you that actually this is the, these are the products we need to be using or this is the new sort of look that we're trying to go for it depends what area you're in like if you're in tv or film you've got a designer and the designer will design all the looks and you're literally following somebody else's look that they test and everything and and then you're using the products that they want you to use so you'll be given you, you know asked to get kit or you'll have your own kit given to you and they're the products that they want you to, to use because they've designed the looks and they it needs to look exactly the same. Um, the sort of like freelance jobs that I do maybe in the, the photo studio, keeping up to date with the latest brands is good, but you obviously need to make sure that they're they're decent, you know, that they last longer and um, you know they're gonna they're gonna be good for the skin, they might be vegan, all these different things that are constantly changing. So I actually find out a lot about new products from my students because they're all on TikTok and they are constantly informing me what the coolest thing is and like what to, to look at and a lot of the time they actually teach me quite a lot about okay. about the, the sort of like what's hot and what's not um but generally um yeah sorry product wise wise it, it depends if you're buying your own kit you need to do your research and make sure that you've tested it and you've tried it and you know that it actually works um but on certain productions you know the designer gets the, the, the final say basically <laughs> sure. okay, right. just, just going to move the conversation on now and think about what routes people would need to go into if they want to go into hair and beauty you, you've all spoken about the courses that you offer and you have all said that there's a there's you know there's level one courses up to sort of level you know level three or four depending on your entry point on there um are there any subjects that you would recommend people should have before they come to you at college? So GCSE wise, are there any sort of subject areas? Tanya, let me start with you with that question. What, what would you expect if you were going to enroll a student onto one of your courses that they would have? So the sort of entry criteria would be to have their English language um, and maths at grade four um, and science, um, particularly for beauty therapy is preferential not essential um, because of the, the skills that you need and the, the opportunities for progression if you have maths and English as the foundation to the beauty therapy for example because a lot of the things that you will do in terms of verbal communication written communication rely on those language skills to be able to do that successfully and then maths will come into everything so from, from the start when you're managing time and in terms of booking appointments all the way up to actually managing your own salon and having to have a budget and buy in stock and understand how commission works because you will be working on commission therefore you need to be able to tally up your clients that day how much you've earned and how much commission that 10 or 20 percent will give you for that day so really invaluable skills sure claire you gave me some really good practical reasons why maths in particular is important as, as a hairdresser do you just want to share some of those with us because i think sometimes people think well i want to cut why do i need to have english and maths why does everyone keep telling me that english and maths is is so important yeah no um here um at west Arts with um, our hairdressing students we allow them to identify how they're embedding their maths and english so you know if we're teaching a cutting lesson we want our students to put you know their start finish times on their mirrors so they're being industry ready they can see what the commercial timings are even down to you know we're having a coloring session when you're mixing ratios how much we need of the fashion shade color to the peroxide strength 
um, you know, that's embedded. Even, you know, when we're talking about consultation, how we're communicating um, and we're having our group discussions, it naturally is embedded so much maths and English and even science. It's so beneficial that we have that in our, in our industry because we use it naturally day to day in the salon. Um, and it's, it's, it's so very important that we are aware of that. We need to know our ratio mixing, you know, when we're mixing color, because if we didn't, we, we would get an uneven color result. So it's just really important that that is really explained and it's, and it's embedded and we know how to follow it. Sure, I don't, apologies if I'm asking you a question you don't know the answer to here, but if someone hasn't got those grades at GCSE for English and Maths, but they want to come to college and access the courses, can they retake English and Maths whilst they're at West Hearts College separately? Yes, so, you know, they've got a fantastic opportunity. They can retake Maths and English. Uh, and an amazing part of it is that it doesn't affect their course of being on hairdressing. It's separate. Um, it may be a separate hour into their maths or an hour into their English of their timetable. So they're not having any disadvantage where they're missing out on, you know, if they're in a media lesson or beauty or hair, they're still able to learn what they want to achieve in their end goal of their qualification, but also gain a qualification in maths or it may be English as well. So sure. It's, it's an opportunity. Oh, okay, right. Remy, just in terms of qualifications, how important is it that someone actually gains the qualifications, whether that's you know level one, two, three, or four, with you before they go out into industry? Could someone get a job going straight from school without having gone through that qualification at college first? I don't think so. <laughs> and there's a lot of um, self-taught makeup artists out there, like there there are on TikTok and stuff like that. But I feel like that's quite a separate industry. And personally, I. And I'm, and I'm just talking from my own experience of, of designers and things. I think when people know that you've done a qualification and that you've, you've stayed committed to something and you've learned skills properly and you've learned them correctly, not just on TikTok or YouTube, and you've sort of committed for two or two years or even three years at college, that gives someone an impression that you are hardworking, you're devoted, you, you're interested in your subject, you know how to do things properly. Um, and yeah, so I mean, um, I don't doubt there are some self-taught makeup artists out there that do okay on TikTok. But I'd say that once you learn the, st the skills like properly for the actual industry, you're, you definitely need to. Yeah, and for insurance purposes as well, you need to be you need to be qualified to get insured. And without being insured, you shouldn't really be working. <laughs> but um, I do, you know, I, I think um, it is a misconception with makeup that a lot of people are self-taught because there is that that whole kind of um, influencer. Um, era but they only do makeup on themselves so you know you definitely need a qualification to be a makeup artist it's a very long-winded sure. way of it but <laughs> that's, i mean play is that the same with hair as i mean i've never thought to ask my barber if he's got any formal qualifications um is that something that everyone working in a salon or self-employed in hair or barbering should have yes no they have to be have their qualifications it's really important to be able to have that you know it's got to be, you know, as Remy mentioned, insurance purposes, you've got to protect yourself um, and you've got to ensure that you are, you know, carrying out a service to a high standard and you've had that qualification, that learning to be able to allow you to feel confident in what you're doing on a client. You know, you're changing, you're changing the clients, could be a hair colour or haircut. You've got to know how to carry out that service to a high standard. Sure. Okay. I mean, Tanya, I mean, just nod your head if it's the, if it's the same from a beauty perspective. But I mean, I, I can see from the beauty perspective. Yeah. More from a beauty perspective because you have to be very aware of how you're carrying out the treatment and the consequences of not carrying out correctly. Um, also, being aware of any skin diseases, skin disorders. So you need that knowledge to be able to do that um, and to be able to work in the industry. Sure. OK, that makes sense. So look, we've, we've touched on qualifications there. I'm really keen, though, to find out about the sorts of skills and qualities and personal attributes that someone who works in this industry would need to have. Now, it's, it's a little bit cliched, but you expect when you go to your hairdresser that you're going to have they're going to have lots of conversation. They're going to be very friendly with you. They're, they're going to be able to keep a conversation going and make you feel at, feel at ease. But for you, I mean, let me start with you, Tanya. What are the main sort of skills and qualities that you think a really good beauty therapist needs? So you've said, yeah, as you said, they need to be a people person. They need to be able to interact, to communicate, to put on that sort of, you know, welcoming. They've got to be welcoming is really important. Um, but they've got to be really good at managing their own time. They've got to be self-motivated. 
they have to show sort of flexibility um, and be able to adapt very, very quickly um, with the industry, with their clients' wishes as well. They have to be, you know, keen to go on new training courses to find out what's happening in the industry as well. Um, but I would say self-motivation um, is is key as well as that, you know, this is a customer, you know, customer-based um, service that we're offering. So it's about those interactions as well are really important, that professionalism. You can't have a bad day. No. Sure. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh... I mean, Claire, same question to you, really, from, from, from a hair perspective. Yeah, so you have to be, you know, an all-rounder and, um, you know, making sure that you're approachable to clients. Also, understanding your clients. Sometimes you might have a client that comes in and they might not be very chatty. They might just want to come in and just have their hair done and say, this is how I want to have it done. It's just about reading your client, respecting how your client wants to have that service carried out. Um, also, you know, allowing your client to feel that they can have them open and close questions with you and that they find that you're approachable. Um, and just also, you know, putting a smile on your face, being happy and showing that you're, you're, you love your job and keeping in with industry changes and, you know, giving your clients advice about new trends. So it's also keeping it current with your clients as well. So you might have a client that comes to you for so many years and open them to willing changes of having a different service to have done to their house. So it allows them to also keep in with industry changes as well. I think it's really important. Sure. And then, I mean, Remy, I guess particularly from your side, when you're working in media makeup as well, is there a distinction between you, when you're working, when you're doing makeup on someone who's there as a client who you know, wants to be made up, Presumably that's a different dynamic to when you've got someone who's uh, maybe an actor or about to appear on a you know on a TV set where they're there because they've got to be. How do you mm -hmm. how do you sort of manage and how do you adjust between those two situations? You just got to read the room um, because everyone's different and every situation will be different. So you might have an actor that needs to concentrate on their lines, doesn't want to be talking to anybody, has to get into character whilst you're doing the makeup might have a really sad scene or a really like, you know, like a, get really into their character. So, you, you you know, some people will want to chat to you a bit like a hairdresser, actually. Some people want to chat, other people won't. Um, but generally, you've got to read the room and just make sure that you're not um, overstepping the, the mark sometimes because everyone's got their own roles. Um, even talking to people whilst they're doing makeup on somebody else, they might, you know, it, it's, it's really important to just know those dynamics of the team that you're working with. Um, but yeah, it's it's different to every every person really. And if I'm honest, <laughs> it's kind of a, it, it, it just every situation is different. So just learning how to read other people's behaviour. Um, but you still need to be a team player, and you still need to have good people skills and, and management skills, and self motivation definitely. is is definitely one that will come through for media as well. But yeah, um, if they don't want to be there sometimes, they really don't want to have their makeup done. <laughs> so it's very important to make everyone feel. Um, relaxed in, in their own way. Sure. Okay. And then another question I asked you is: What experiences can young people get if they want to sort of experiment or they want to find out whether this is the industry for them? I, I mean, I don't know. Are there any legalities? Would you recommend that people start trying to cut their friends' hairs at home or um, put in put in makeup on their nieces and nephews when they're babysitting? I mean, what would you recommend? How does how does someone gain that experience or that first-hand practical experience? Any of you can answer that one. I'd say certainly not start them to cut hair at home. Cut it all. <laughs> that, that, no. Um, but I would say more so, um, you know, practicing on, um, you, you know, you can practice some updo styling, hair ups, um, practicing certain styles that you want to create, like hair ups, plaiting. Uh, maybe practice some blow drying as well, which is really important to be able to see. Also, you know, building yourself in your own portfolio, taking before and after photos, seeing, you know, this is what I did before I blow dried, you know, my sister's hair or my friend's hair, and this is how it's turned out after. And I would say, where Remy mentioned earlier, as the students, we learn so much TikToks when they're doing their reels in I and out. Doing reel. It's just, yeah, it's so cool. Actually, like, they're doing reels. Yeah, <laughs> like creating that real one, one moment they've got zoomed in the hair's like completely not style next thing they've got real back out and you know being like creative just to get the feel of you know is this actually the industry that you want to do and there's so yeah. many videos out there like yeah. we didn't have that when we were training like we didn't have youtube videos we didn't have well, i didn't anyway <laughs> no i didn't have but like we, 
you know, we didn't have TikTok, we didn't have all of these massive like influences around us. So it's really great to get into it now right. and like really practice because I find that when I teach makeup, I'm I'm teaching them how to do the natural stuff. They can do a dress makeup, they can do a like a crazy makeup and things. So it's just learning and take pictures and it just shows us how keen you are as well if you've been practicing for the last couple of years. Um, and then we can also give feedback on that and then you can build up on, on top of what you've already done before. Probably wouldn't recommend doing waxing or anything no, like that. No, no. I mean, I think there are things that you could possibly do at home and things that we would recommend. <laughs> so you could practice and do a facial on yourself. It would be a different experience, but you could practice that. Um, I mean, fortunately, it might be the opportunities you might have locally to be able to go in and help out sort of on a, you know, um, as a part-time role or as a Saturday assistant, um, you'd probably mainly be doing reception, but it gives you a good opportunity to see how the salon is run um, and to engage with the therapists that are there to help set up the room before a client comes in. So probably some experience like that rather than the hands-on experience. Sure. I mean, that's a really good point, actually, because I was going to ask about you know, work experience. But I, I, I guess any sort of salon experience, you know, even if you're just there leafing out the magazines or sweeping up, it's, it's going to be it's going to be good just for you to get a feel about what you're going on there. I mean, that's what you did to start with, wasn't it, Claire? You were working, say, in a, in, you know, in a salon. So I did an apprenticeship and, um, you know, within the apprenticeship as well. And then you would know as well about it. Yeah. So, you know, making the tea or coffee, sweeping the hair, uh, cleaning the salon is all part of, you know, I would sweep the hair and I'd be making tea and coffee, but then I'd be watching the stylist think, oh, I really want to do that blow dry. It made me more eager to be able to, like, I want to be on the shop floor. I want to yeah. do that. And even the element of like, right, I'm going to wash somebody's hair. I'm going to get hits. And, you know, you'd see things like there'd be advantages and it just makes, it sound for myself, it made me more keen to, work towards gaining my qualification and getting on the shop floor and um, just doing that all rounder starting you know from the bottom working your way up and it's really down to I think you as an individual mm -hmm. if you're you know you're driven and you want to get to that end goal you can do it you can so sure. I, I guess all the conversations that you just pick up on the you know the professional style it's having as well would be really invaluable i mean what, what do you think i suppose particularly tanya and, and, and claire if someone just went to their local salon and there's going to be one on pretty much every high street or in every town in, in in the county do you think that's the sort of thing that salons generally will be receptive to you know to doing even if it's just a one-off I think I think they would. It depends how you present yourself as an individual. So um, you know, maybe you go in having researched what that salon offers, so that you can find out a little bit about the type of treatments that they do, why you're interested in it, um, and what you hope to gain from it. So if you're you know using sort of your initiative, I think they'll they'll see that and they'll be sort of willing to maybe offer you you know even if it is just a few hours just to be able to get a feel of that environment. Yeah, sure. So there's possibly something you can, you, you guys can all, all, all do if you're watching. That's something, and it's something that you want to pursue. Um, just before moving on to the next section, I, and I can see some people have submitted some questions. If you've not done so already, and there's something you really want to know, do type it in on the questions tab. It will, it will come through to me. Um, Tanya, can you just talk through? I mean, I'm guessing probably most people watching this at the moment, if they were going to come on and do a beauty therapy course, they'd probably be accessing a level two or a level three course. So can you briefly just talk around what's the composition of that course at West Arts College? What will they actually learn? How long does it take? How many hours a week are they in? And so on. Yeah, certainly. So um, you start on a level two if you have the entry qualifications for level two, and that gives you a broad range of those basic skills, so the essential skills that you need to start with. So you'll be doing um, in your sort of first term, you'll be doing manicures, pedicures, facials as well. Uh, you do some makeup, not to the extent that Remy teaches it, but just sort of day and evening makeup. You know, you'll also do waxing and eye. Um, eyebrow treatments, eyelash and eyebrow treatments as well. You'll be looking at things like the health and safety, so that you're working in a safe environment. You'll spend time doing a client care and communication because that's essential when you're doing your consultation. And then anatomy as well. So it's really important to know what you're doing and how it's affecting the, the sort of underlying structures as well. So it's important to have that knowledge before you attempt to do any treatments. So um, level two would be for, we won that for 33 weeks. And that's, how many hours is that a week? 
that that's three days a week essentially the students are in so they're in three days a week um, and then once they've completed level two they can progress to level three so they're learning more advanced treatment so they're kind of building their skill set um, they could go on to massage indian head massage body and facial electrics so uh, firming and lifting treatments they can offer the clients and then it's just developing those interpersonal skills as well. Um, and now they can then progress onto level four. So doing more advanced treatments as well. Uh, so that would be laser treatments, skin rejuvenation, microdermabrasion. So they really are making that sort of progression into sort of almost that aesthetic field as well. So there's lots of avenues once they've learned the basics. For sure. Okay. And Claire, I mean, same question for you, Glenn. I know you mentioned and you were sort of quite keen to say it's hairdressing and barbering. So is that all taught as part of the same course or do you have to choose which of the two you want to study and find out more about? So with hair and barbering, you rather want to do barbering first, which is the first um, of the year, or you can go and do hairdressing separately. Um, it depends on what avenue um, you'd like to take first. So here at West Hearts, we do have level one hair and beauty, um, depending on your level of your grading or your maths and your English. So if you want to do level one first, you do have the hair side of styling and um, setting hair. And also you have the element of the advantage of beauty. So you learn um, makeup, skincare. Um, and then if you want to progress and do level two hairdressing, um, you'll learn the elements from health and safety to consultation, to styling hair, to also cutting, and then also you've got your technical units of colouring hair as well. Um, and then the progression step from there, you could go into going into level two barbering, um, and that gives you advantage of learning how to do cut facial hair, doing um, cut men's hair. Um, and then you also have some fantastic theory units as well, so you'll learn more in depth of consultation, health and safety, um, and if you didn't want to, for example, you finished level two hairdressing and you don't want to go into barbering, you have the option of also going into level three hairdressing, um, and that's more advanced technical units. So, for example, you've got your colouring units, so you'll learn more in depth of colour corrections, of how to go, you know, from light to dark or dark to light with somebody's hair. And you've got also the more advanced technical units within cutting as well. So it's it's really fun the avenue that you can progress onto. There's a load of progression routes that you can take. It's, it's really good. Sure. And then, well, Remy, just before I ask you to come on and talk about the composition of, of your course, people might be watching this thinking, well, I'm doing GCSEs and that's given me level two qualifications. So why would I go in and start a brand new level two course having already done my GCSEs? We actually get that a lot. We, we get a lot of people saying, can we just go into level three? And whereas, like, obviously the level two wouldn't allow you to do that in most subjects, you need to know the basic skills. So we need to teach you everything from hygiene, um, how to, you know, from all the laws and legislations of your health and safety to how to, you know, put on, you know, like every single bit up from a, a foundation or like a skin cleanse to an eyeliner. And although you might know some certain ways, you, we need to show you like the, the way that we are supposed to, to do it. Um, and yeah, I think like, even if you are, at a certain level of makeup skills, it's the theory behind it as well. So we have a lot of um, anatomy in in um, and physiology in uh, makeup as well, because you're learning about the structure of the skin, the muscular, um, you know, um, like and your um, I can't think of what else we we, we teach everything, don't we? All, all of the the muscles and the and the bones. What I was meant to say, apologies. Um, so yeah, you, you need to know the basic skills to get onto the level three. And a lot of the learners want to go straight to level three because that's where all the kind of like fun stuff is. But it's the, the skill and the technique and the theory that you're learning in the level two um, that will make you a good makeup artist, really. And then you're building on that every year. But like we do a level four as well, and you're building on that um, the, the same basic skills you do in the level two. You're going to be doing throughout your whole um, well, whole college time and then your whole um, career because it's, it's that you know you're perfecting it constantly sure okay so i mean all three of you can answer this one but just to clarify because i know there'll be parents watching this one as well who'll be saying asking the same same question but in, in your mind don't be concerned about restarting in theory a level two level program because oh, it's giving like, you some real good to. yeah it's like everyone has to don't they and and it's all it's totally 
you know, you might have a level two in, in something, but it's not relative to, yeah. to the course. So it's not that you're, or you're not good enough to go into level three. It's just like, we have to give you basic skills in level two to go on to our level two. And even if you do a level four in media makeup and then decide to do beauty therapy, you still have to learn and um, start from level two because you don't know how to do a massage and you don't know how to do waxing. So it's totally different. So even, oh God, I did a level two not so long ago and I'm qualified in my area quite highly. So like it's, it's just different industries and different skills that you'll be learning. It's not to do with like what you're capable of learning. It's just different, it's different industries. Yeah, yeah. Like it's the foundation of every industry is totally different. Like right? you'll learn different skills. Sure. Okay. Well, no, thanks for clarifying that. Because we know the sim similar things come up when we talk about careers in construction, um, careers yeah. in childcare, where when you go to college, you, you've got to start at level two. But that's that's perfectly fine to do that. And it's a good, really good stepping stone then to take your next take your next steps. Um, what I wanted to find out now, I just want you to reassure everyone watching this really that this is an industry that there's going to be huge demand for in the future, so particularly within within Hertfordshire. So Tanya, if I just start with you, just talk about what sort of destinations do your students go on to once they've graduated? Um, and do you see there always being lots of careers available within beauty therapy? Um, so it's really interesting at the moment um, with beauty therapy because it is a really growing and expanding. Um, so there are lots of avenues for people to go, but the industry itself is, is changing and it's about that experience now for a lot of people that the clients want. So that experience, they're looking for certain products, so they want these products to be, you know, biologically active and they want to be with results driven. So there's new sort of technology and equipment that's being used, so there are real advances within the sort of industry um, and they can progress. Um, there's so many different profession routes um, and we're quite lucky to work very closely with the growth that we have there that sort of the um, spa five star spa um, that we work closely with but students go into lots of different sort of aspects of the industry whether that's into a laser clinic if they've done it they've completed a level four whether that's a beauty salon whether that's to do sort of lash technician um, nail technician for example um, or to go on to specialise in facials as well, um, doing different sort of peels um, and treatments as well. So there's, there, it's a real great time to be joining now because I think there are so many people who are on board about sort of getting these, the, the beauty industry really growing. Sure. I mean, I mean Claire, I, I, I'm sure there's always going to be a need for people to have barbers and hairdressers, aren't there? So that in itself must be fairly reassuring from, from a hair industry. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's really good, you know, because you know it's good progression routes of working in salons, um, even even you know working in on TV sets doing hair. It's a great opportunity. Um, I know I've heard um as well. My friend um, you know, does hair on a, a cruise ship, which is amazing. So you know, he gets to see the world as well as um, doing his job that he loves. So it's a great opportunity and, you know, maybe a, late, a later route on in life, maybe getting into education, being a teacher and, you know, delivering your passion and your skill set as well could be another progression route um, within the hairdressing industry that you could take as well. Yeah, and there are in the future therapy so on the cruise ships, there's a, a big, obviously, opportunity there for them on the cruise ships, but there's so many influencers now and sort of, you know, blogging and TikToks that they could get involved in as well. So there's, there's lots of scope. Sure. Claire, I'm asking you a question you, you probably won't have the answer to um, straight away. So maybe just talk around this, but I'm just interested to know what proportion of, of hairdressers actually work in salons compared to those that are self-employed? And you, you use the term mobile hairdressers. Is that the, is that the phrase? Um, yeah, so mobile hair, hairdressers are also known as uh, freelance hairdressers. Um, I would say the industry has certainly changed a lot. I do think um, more so that people are starting to work more for themselves, um, freelance. Um, and being a mobile hairdresser, sometimes that's a really good opportunity for uh, some individuals because they're working around their schedule and their time of life. Um, sometimes, you know, I do see a little bit of a dynamic. So a lot of people are in salons or they are in barber shops. Um, but having that rate of being able to work for yourself is a great opportunity because you can plan your schedule and your diary, um, and you could also build up your clientele. It may also be a route that you know you might want to open your own barber shop or your own salon, and um, it depends on the avenue that you want to take. But I would say there's a bit of um, you know, differentiation in both for some hairdressers and barbers. 
And am I right to say within all, within, all, within all of your courses, do you cover some of that sort of business startup skills or knowledge that you'd need? Yeah, we do. So um, in our induction, we do um, talk about, you know, the course that you're on and the progression routes that it can lead to. And we do deliver that in our curriculum. And so it, it gives, you know, the students a clearer idea of, you know, the route that they want to take and their progression route. So they know where they're working to and what their goal is to achieve. And it's also, you know, a good stepping stone because even though you might be at the goal that you want to be, where can you go next? What can you do next? I think that's really important that you keep your ambition and what else you can achieve. I think it's really important. And the level four yeah. advanced beauty therapy certainly has a management route in there as well. So mm -hmm. you're learning those management skills and also you do public relations as well. So they're well equipped to essentially start their own business if that's what they choose to do. Sure. I mean, Remy, pr presumably, though, you, you'd recommend that it's probably good experience to go in and work in a salon when you're around other people rather than trying to come straight out and go on by yourself straight away. Yeah, definitely. I mean, in a as a makeup artist, um, you can work in salons and, and be around people. But I mean, we are literally in the middle of a, such a good area because we've got Sky Studios being built at the moment. We've got an um, Apple studio being built. We've also got Warner Brothers up the road. We've got Bobbington Studios being built, and the demand for media makeup artists will be like high. We've got they've got like trainee finders and stuff out there. Certain productions have like apprenticeship schemes. Um, we've got there's a lot of I think that the industry is changing a lot because it was quite tough for a while. I'm not going to lie, it was quite difficult to get into the industry, but lately they are looking for new talent everywhere. Um, but, you know, being around other makeup artists or other hairdressers, like I'm constantly learning off other hairdressers on set or um, nail techs on, on set and things like that because you're, you're around people and you're discussing things and even just other makeup artists and other students as well. But um, I think it's important to be around people when you first start out because you get guidance, you get advice and you just meet people and network as well and they might get you on another job and then that person on another job might suggest you for a different job and then you can maybe get your mate in and then you kind of get a little hub of people to work with. Um, so I would say definitely coming out of college, always work with other people. Um, and if you do want to work for yourself, that's absolutely fine as well. Like um, a lot of bridal, I still do a lot of bridal now um, and you're working kind of with, with different people each time. But with that, you need great communication skills and a lot of confidence and you've got to actually go out and find them yourself. So yeah, I think like getting your own, um, getting a little hub of, of people together, or if you're on your own, or then going into an apprenticeship or a different like you know, into um, a salon would be definitely a good good idea for starting out. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that about the demand for for, for makeup artists for our media because it gives me an opportunity just to share the incredible statistic that by the end of this decade there are going to be more stages in Hertfordshire than there will in Hollywood. So it's quite clearly. So the production I did last year was in um, them today to move from Hollywood to Wembley. And then so we're, like, we're so close to, to London. And like, so everyone from Hollywood seems to be going, nah, you're too expensive in Hollywood. We're going to go to London or we're going to go to Manchester or Birmingham or whatever. And we've got so many, we've got so many opportunities starting over here. Um, yeah, and one of my students at the moment, she's working in a workshop. I forgot to tell you this route. <laughs> but like, you know, making the creatures, making the prosthetics doing the hair punching, all of the kind of like stuff that you're doing pre-production. You know, there's a lot of workhouses around here as well. Like you've got some amazing ones in Ail Aylesbury, you've got Millennium FX, which are fantastic. You've got um, KM FX, which is in Whitmansworth. You know, there's so many like right near us, like we're, we're, we're in a really good position. Um, but you again, you do have to go out and find these things. So like, no one's gonna just hand jobs to you. You need to start looking um, as soon as you know what industry you wanna go in, do your research, find out where the places that you want to work are and just bother them, like email them constantly and find the designers that you like and just constantly email them until they just want to get rid of you so they give you a day's work experience. Like that would be my biggest um, like advice. Right. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, we've got a lot of opportunities. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of 
that's that's you know that's a really positive answer. So anyone watching this one should be reassured that you're learning a trade here that's going to serve you in really good stead. And actually, there's lots of really good opportunities. Whether you want to go and work for yourself or whether you want to go and work in a salon or or, or for somebody else. Right, we've got a number of questions that have come in. If you've got any questions that you want to ask to um, Tanya, Claire, or Remy, this is really your last opportunity to do it now. So if I give you a couple more minutes, if you want to type your questions in the questions dashboard, um, open it up. It opens out a text box. Type it in there. It's only visible to me, and then I will direct the questions I'm about to now. So um, this question, I think, came on when you were um, when you when you were talking, Tanya, about the beauty therapies that you do and the skills that they learn. The question is, who do they practice on? Are they practicing on dummies or the sort of model? Oh, good question. So they will practice on each other. So they will practice all the skills. So the teacher will demonstrate how to do a particular treatment. Um, so a facial, for example, and then they will go ahead and practice that whole treatment on another student so that they get the experience of doing the treatment, but also know what it's like to receive that treatment, know what it's like to, to sort of have a treatment. Um, and that's, that, that's a good way to learn, essentially, if you're doing it correctly. So, yes, they will have be a model for every treatment that they learn. Sure. Okay. <laughs> And then, I mean, Claire, am I right to say, is this an operating salon? Do people actually come down to you to get hair cuts or is it just for the for the college? No, we um, we open to um, a salon and we open for external clients um, to come in and have their hair done. And so when the learners are um, joining the course, um, it's demonstrated by the tutors and they then practice on their tuition heads. And then once they are confident and they feel ready, we then open to a client session and we have a diary appointment, timing with the client sessions, and they are allocated into the salon. Yeah, sure. so it's the same thing. Once they're confident and they've worked on each other and they've acquired those skills, then they work on the general public. So okay. we, we have to be here for the customers to come to us. Sure. OK. I guess, Remy, the advantage of practising when you're doing makeup is that whatever you put on, you can take off. But so slightly different with um, with hairdressing, isn't it, that you can't undo some of the things that you do. <laughs> but you can teach them how to do that. Um, yeah, no, you can't. You can't undo it. That's why we say, you know, if you are practising and you want to do not cut hair at home, um, it's just something that can't be, you know, fixed straight away. But the good thing is about makeup, as you said, you can take it on and take it off. But we don't get a lot of paying clients to be turned <laughs> into like a monster or like, a, you know, like a casualty makeup. But we do work with the theatre department here, so they get like, like lots of they do all the productions and they, they we have like a college TV channel and we do collaborate a lot with the media and they're um, funded by Screen Skills as well. With the link um, to Screen Skills has got some good training finders. But um, so we don't tend to get paying clients for media, but we do collaborate a lot with other people back in production stuff. So, but um, yeah. Okay. Get right, I've had a follow-up question, which Tanya, I'm, this one I'm directing to you. I've been told for the beauty therapy, people do bikini line waxing. Would this be an okay thing for a student to not have done on themselves if they're not comfortable? Um, it would be, it would, it's difficult and um, it's not we don't start off doing that so you will get to know the sort of people that you're working with and in the group um it's it's more about having the ability to practice all these treatments so we would never you know someone wouldn't have to have it but they need to sort of understand what what it feels like to be a customer as well sure okay thanks for that question um another one here this is another one for you tanya i'm guessing the question is, what's the difference between beauty and health treatment? So, I mean, I'm guessing you, I think you spoke about, you know, massages, for instance. There probably is, um, there probably isn't, there probably isn't too much distance between some of the therapies you do and some of those sort of really medical, medically driven treatments that are offered. So, I mean, is there crossover? Do people become masseuses or massages off the back of this? Yeah, yeah. so certainly they can specialise, so they can go into massage, you can become a holistic therapist, so more into that arom aromatherapy and health side of it. Um, people can then go on to train if they want to be sports therapists, so they can continue to sort of add to their skill set. So there is a, there is a crossover, um, and especially I think now that um, a lot of the treatments, especially a lot of the level four treatments, there is that sort of medical side coming into it, but it's by no means medical, but they're looking at obviously more advanced treatments. So there is a little bit of a crossover. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, question. This one's very specifically for Claire, I guess. What's the, well? And actually, Remy, you might be onto this one. So, what's the most challenging hairstyle that you have to do? Challenging hairstyle? I'd say a bob, personally, or like a graduation. I don't know. That's what I struggle. <laughs> I would say it, it's different for because you know when we go through um, the cuts of the students, you know, I always like them to grade. You know, which one did you feel like you like the most? And it's a really different, it depends down to individuals, but I would probably say for myself, when I was training, it was the graduated bob, yeah. I found, because you have to maintain that angle, the angle 45, yeah. um, and I would say when the barber inside, it's more your fading, like skin fade, if you don't skin fade correctly, you don't remove that line, when you place with your detailer, that's it, the cut's, you know, the cut isn't finished, it's not to how the client's desired look. So I'd say skin fading more so for barbering, and I would say more so for hairdressing, I would say the graduated bob. Yeah, so do you totally yeah. agree? <laughs> uh, um, what about this is sort of fresh in my mind. When I try, try and take my children to the to the hairdressers, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, but I mean, if you know, if you if you're in a salon and then the next customer walks in and is maybe a five year old in there, do you just kind of roll your eyes and think, right, cancel the next appointment? This one's going to be a pain. No, it's it's actually quite fun. So you know, it could be, what's your favourite cartoon? Let's get this on. But you know, the phone and you know, you know would you like a sweet after? Because you can have a you know distraction. Distraction. We have really good fitters. And um, you know, it's just no. I think it's more um, you know how your approach is with the client you know if you're quite come across quite nervous or oh, what did I, am I going to be able to that will impact on the client so I think it's just keeping quite neutral and calm and keeping that flow within your your day with your client that's fine yeah okay um and then to question I think all three of you could answer this one um do you enjoy weddings I assume that means do you enjoy preparing people for weddings is that is that more stressful is it more enjoyable is it more fun I mean I'm, I'm guessing so but again, particularly you know Claire and Remy you probably cut brides hairs on the morning of weddings haven't you um I tend to not do any cutting on the day of a bride's wedding um I would it's more just like an updo styling prepping the hair setting it beforehand and and preparing sometimes you can get a bride that can be really nervous which is natural it can be i just think it's about you as a stylist or keeping calm and collective and not impacting that on your client can slightly make your client feel a bit more calmer you become a style uh, like a, a bridal manager yeah in the morning and you're like stopping people from entering the room you're calming down the mum of the bride if you're like you're, you're doing everything of Anne's doing the makeup and being a counsellor and de-stressing and entertaining yeah that's I love doing weddings I think they're really nice it's nice to be part of people today as well but it's also a big responsibility it is. Um, but as long as you've had trials and you know what your client wants you're absolutely fine sure okay right I think that's the final question that's that, that's come in so um, before we go on the screen at the moment I have put up all of the four colleges in, in Hertfordshire and I've put the QR code next to them that will take you through to their home pages. So whichever is your local college or whichever ones are uh, close enough to you that you consider going to them, I really do recommend having a look at them. They will also have details of any open days that they might have coming up. Have you, have you guys got any open days coming up at West Hearts? We just had our biggest just one, one, but we will probably have another one in, is that one? No. We have it in March, March, March open day. March. Coming up. Yeah, one in March. So, so don't worry if you're not year 11, it doesn't matter if you're a bit younger than that, but you just want to kind of have a think ahead, then definitely go along to those open days. I'm sure, you know, Tanya, Claire and Remy, I'm sure we'll all be at those open days and their, their, their team will be as well. And that's a really good way of just finding out a little bit more. So have a look at your local college uh, and then go and do a bit of research into the courses they do. The other websites that you've given me here that are on your screen, the QR code. So um, I've got the NHBF um, Claire, that you sent through to me. So just explain to everyone what that is and why that might be of use for some to look at. So it's a National Hairdressing Federation. It's really good. So it's, you know, any upcoming industry news that is happening within hairdressing or barbering, it's a really good site to follow. And, um, you know, just reflecting back on the pandemic when we could or we couldn't do hairdressing or barbering, it was really good to keep you current in the industry. You can follow um, them on Instagram as well. It's a really useful site to follow. It's really beneficial to, to be able to follow the website. Sure. And then you've also given me the Screen Skills website. So Remy, do you just want to explain what Screen Skills is and why that yeah. might be of interest? Unfortunately, it's only um, you can only 
become a like a screen skills member when you're over 18 but it basically just has a load of information about every sector of the industry so like anything from like being um, a script writer to a makeup artist to a um you know like a cameraman like there's, lo there's loads of stuff on there i obviously don't work for screen skills or anything but i use it myself um, they have modules on there, they do like lots of training on there and they offer lots of opportunities and, and the trainee finder. So, you know, I'm hoping that they'll still be going like after you guys have, have like, arrived on our course and, and you're, you've turned 18 because you can get a lot of industry placements from there and there's mentoring schemes and they also give bursaries out so um, to fund your further career. So it's a really, really good, um, good website to have a look at. Sure. Okay, and then I mean, just in closing, there, I'm just showing everyone on the screen right now, and um, the QR code and the links back to all of our Hop websites. So do have a look at Hop if you're not familiar with it. This QR code will take you through to the homepage where all of the webinars that we've recorded over the last two and a half years are available to watch. So I think uh, today is number 61 or 62 that we've completed. So there's a whole variety of different career options that you can have a look at and explore anything from law to TV production. Last week we did cybersecurity. Um, next week's the last one we're doing in 2022. We're looking at careers as an estate agent. So there's definitely something on there for everybody. So do make sure that your friends are aware of it and you tell your teachers at school to have a look at this site as well. Um, just in closing, I'd firstly like to thank those of you in the audience that have turned up and are live and have submitted some questions today. Really hope you found this session really informative and it's going to help you make your next decisions. If you have any feedback for us or if you've enjoyed today, just type it in the questions box for us now. That's really good feedback for us. Um, just to give you a minute or so to do that though, let me just go to our three panelists. So, so to Tanya, to Claire and to Remy, thank you so much for giving up your time and for sharing your own personal experiences with us today. It's, it's been tremendously informative, and I'm sure everybody watching this, whether they're watching it live or whether they're watching it back on, on YouTube, um, will have taken so much of this, and it's really going to help them with their with their next steps. Let me just give you the opportunity though, just to sell West Hearts College in particular. Um, so it, it, any one of you can take this question, but just, just explain why coming to college, why is that a really good option, you think, for people once they, once they finish their GCSEs at school? I think it's a great option. <laughs> it's lovely to meet new people. Um, it's kind of like you're you're still got the structure at school, um, but it's not as um, you know you're getting there on your own. It's, it's a little bit more um, independent. Independent, yeah. You're, you're you're just you're you're learning new skills. You're meeting people from other departments. There's loads of clubs that you can go to to kind of meet new friends. I think it's basically I'm saying selling it as a great social scene, <laughs> but um, it's just giving you that extra. Rather than you know, it's, um, it's giving you that industry sort of um, sim simulator, would you say? Like, so you're working in the salon, you're you're getting that experience without going straight into the industry and um, starting, you know, like in the big wide world of makeup, hair, and beauty. You're, you're getting that. It's kind of like a stepping stone to kind of ease you in um, to your to your career, really. Yeah, and certainly at West Hearts, I'd say you have um, one of the key strengths is you've got a lot of people that are industry based and have got a lot of experience in the industry and I think that's invaluable knowledge to pass on to students as well. I mean Absolutely. the fact that range of resources for learners to be able to access while they're here studying as well as at home and um, so it's a good recapping for them to access at home with their lessons, their curriculum areas um, and also as Tanya mentioned you know industry ready and reflecting that on our students is key for us to make sure they understand and they're enjoying their learning because they're at the point of it all for us to make sure they love what they're learning. Sure, thank you. I hadn't prepared you for that question as well, and you answered it incredibly well. So you really are very, very good people, pe people persons, which you need to do in this industry. So thank you so much to the three of you. Um, let me just wish the, all of you watching this and the best of luck with your future career decisions. Uh, um, I hope you found this informative. I hope you found it useful. Best of luck, and um, we look forward to finding out how you've all got on. So thank you, and have a very good evening. Thank you. Thank you.